This is a Halloween mask. This is a knife with fake blood. And my sister is terrified of Michael Myers. Kid behind the camera, an angry grandpa who recently died not long ago, may have been exposed for abuse. And this involves PTSD and some other serious topics. So let's talk about it. is up everybody this is chris from the rewired soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution and if you're new to my channel my channel is all about mental health so what i like to do is take things from the youtube community or pop culture in general and try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being so if you're into that kind of stuff make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and before i get started like another well not another but a quick announcement for any of you who missed uh my video yesterday like come join our Facebook group like it is amazing so far I think there's almost a hundred people in there and just like the support the support in there people are oh my god I just love it I love it so much come in there hang out with me and the other rewired soldiers and like it's just a great place to talk about the problem but focus on the solution when it comes to your mental health I will always be linking it down in the description so come on in and join us but anyways so yeah let's talk about King uh, kid behind the camera angry grandpa as well as the sister Jen all right so, uh, this was brought to my attention by my buddy from the channel QStar. He just did a video about this, and he made a video after seeing, I think the channel name is Prim Inc. or Prime Inc., I don't know how he, how he pronounces it, as well as Roasted Studios. And this was brought to my attention, and I wanted to make a video about this. So, before I kind of talk about the subjects, something I try, I've been trying to teach all of you is check your motives. Check your motives, check your motives, check your motives. So I know I'm gonna get a ton of people who like, you know, leave comments and they're like, you're just doing this for views or subscribers or attention and da 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 da. And like, that's cool. What I try to teach all of you is be true to yourself, all right? Always check with your own motives because people are gonna think you do things for all sorts of wacky reasons. But you have to check in with yourself. The only person that you need to worry about is like you, right? My goal at the end of every day is to go to sleep with a clean conscience. So when I was talking with some people yesterday, I talked with my girlfriend, I talked with QStar a little bit, I talked with some other people, and I'm like, should I make a video on this? Should I make a video on this? What are my motives behind this? And I'm making a video because I checked in with my motives. I did something else I recommend that you all do, which is if you have an idea that may or may not be good, ask other people. And <clears throat> my motives are pure. I want to raise awareness, and this is what I do with most of my videos, right? I take things that are going on in the community and try to teach you about your mental health. So the topic that some people are focusing on is uh, the, the potential child abuse. And I'll say this, just real quick opinion on this because I really wanna focus on the PTSD aspect because I've had some of you ask me about PTSD lately and this is a, a good time to talk about it. So anyways, the, as far as the child abuse, so for those of you who don't know, like I'm gonna link some videos down below from QStar, Prime Inc. and Roasted Studios and you can be the judge for yourself. But I'll say this, these are older videos that they don't do anymore, but I think something that's been brought up that we should ask ourselves about is like, does this still happen and they just don't record it, right? Um, there's definitely some issues, like there are some newer videos where you can see there's still some issues. And I've thought of, I was thinking about doing like the whole neuroscience behind like kids' brain development and how this does affect them and all of that. So I will say this, like I'm not gonna accuse anybody, like that's a very serious allegation, but I will say this, and I think this is what people like QStar and Prime Inc and you know, Rosa Studios are trying to say like, I think it should at least be investigated. I think that's safe to say, you know? I think with the videos they've put out in the past, I think it's reasonable for that to be investigated. Um, Kid Behind the Camera was also friends with Daddy of Five, and those of you who follow YouTube news, you know what happened to Daddy of Five. So like, that's kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? So uh, so yeah, like I know QStar and some others are trying to get the attention of people like Philip DeFranco and stuff like that. But yeah, like I care about the well-being of all people. And I just think, you know, something like that should at least be looked into, you know what I mean? But I do want to talk about something that is very serious and it's PTSD, abuse, and like, how to like treat people who have PTSD. So this video is for 
people who struggle with PTSD, as well as if you know somebody who has PTSD. I'm gonna link a video that I did. I'm gonna link it uh, down below as well as in the info card. I did um, a video with my buddy Kalayla from the channel Post Traumatic Victory. If any of you struggle with PTSD, go check out Kalayla's channel. But like, she gave me some tips on like, how to help somebody with PTSD. So I'm gonna link that video. But anyways, so Kid Behind the Camera, like something I, I saw in Roasted Studios video, like he and Angry Grandpa before he passed away, like they they were like, I don't wanna say torturing, but like they were treating this, this poor woman who has PTSD like awfully, awfully like scaring her and playing pranks on her and stuff. Like listen, listen, listen to me very carefully. I am a jokester, right? I love messing around, I love having fun. I mess with my son, I mess with my girlfriend, I mess with my cat. You know, I do things, like that's something I like to do, it's fun. But like, there's this line, you know what I mean? There's a line between, and I think that's like something that comes up with like Jake Paul and Logan Paul and all that. It's like, there's a line between like, messing around and pranks, if you will, and then like, like abuse, you know? And, but, like purposely triggering somebody who struggles with post-traumatic stress disorder is absolutely not cool. It is not cool in any way, shape, or form. So um, Jen, uh, who is the sister, like she she made a post about, I saw this in Russell Studios video, I'm trying to figure out like where it was posted, but like she talks about where her PTSD came from, right? And it sounds, it sounds like it was a, an abusive relationship. Um, that's what it sounds like. But here's something that I wanna to talk to you all about. So something that really like put up a red flag and QSTAR did a very good job mentioning this like over and over and over again. I think Prime Inc did too. But like this family, they normalize this stuff. They normalize alcoholism, they normalize abuse. And there's a, there's a video of Jen talking about like one of her like, you know, fond memories. And it's a story about how angry grandpa was drunk and kick the crap out of her. It was so freezing, because I was always like this skinny little thing, and I never had any meat on my bones. So uh, what I would do is I would take my blanket and go and turn up the heat like full blast. And then one day my dad finally got tired of it, and I was laying on the air vent, <laughs> and all of a sudden all I hear was, what the f what the f what the f to be good And then like, like daddy just like kicks the Added me. I'm sorry that I'm cussing with you. This is what happens. And then, you know, my dad like kicks it out of me and then yanks the blanket off of me and says, God damn, Jenny, picks me up and throws me against the wall. You know, legs go flying, arms go this way, go that way. And I was like, holy. And then, so like my dad, like, he was a, his, this was back when he was a, mean and drunk you know i know you know he didn't mean to do it it was just the alcohol talking this is really just such a sign of how normalized this abuse is that she's apologizing to us for cursing in a story about her father horrifically abusing her like kicking the sh out of your child like actually kicking your kid while they're on the ground and then throwing them against a wall that's absolutely disgusting alcohol is not an excuse for that right and it's, it's fascinating too, just the way we work because I think QSTAR brought it up, like she apologizes for cussing in that part, but she's telling a story about how she, her fond, one of her fondest memories was him like beating her, right? And, and I know depending on where you're from and what your background is, like, um, uh, you know, like whether you spank your kids or whatever, like I got spanked as a kid, I don't think that messed me up too bad, but like the way she talked about it, like this sounded like a drunken abuse situation. You know what I mean? And and one thing that she does is she kind of brushes it off. She's like, oh, but he was drunk, you know, he had a problem with alcohol. And like, that's not cool, you guys. Like, I'm just trying to tell you, like that's, that's not cool at all. Like, don't make excuses for other people. I'm gonna make more videos. Like, again, I want to empower all of you. Like, none of you deserve that. None of you deserve that. Like, some of you have been in toxic relationships with alcoholics or drug addicts or whoever it is, or, and you make excuses for them. Like, 
cut that stuff out, like find a support group, like talk to somebody, like get out of that situation. Like this is not normal, this is not okay, no matter what, all right? Like we make so many excuses. Like I know when I was in abusive relationships, I would make excuses for the other person and that's not cool. And like I used to be, you know, uh, verbally or emotionally abusive when I was in my terrible, terrible, terrible days. And like, that wasn't okay of me. Like, yeah, I had a rough childhood. Yeah, I had this. And yeah, I was a drug addict and alcoholic, but like, that didn't give me the right to say those things to any, any woman I was dating. I was verbally and emotionally abusive to friends and all of that, you know? Like, this is one of the reasons I work on my mental health so much because that is not okay. It is not okay to treat people like this in any way, shape, or form, all right? Like, as some of you like see me in the comments and stuff, I get sassy. I like snap back and clap back at people. I have no problem doing that, but like, <laughs> It is not what I used to be, right? Like, I don't I don't try to degrade anybody, you know, I might just argue my point or, you know, whatever it is. But like, we, we have to really look at these things, like, don't normalize these types of things in your life. And one thing that I will bring up about PTSD and being the child, a child who was abused as a kid, being a child who was as abused as a kid, whether verbally, emotionally, physically, you are more likely to find a partner later on in life who does those things. Children of addicts and alcoholics are like 20 times more likely to date an addict or an alcoholic. Like, watch my video that I'll link up in the info card as well about why you date who you date. Like a lot of us don't realize why we're dating these types of people. Why do we keep getting in these situations? Like I've had some people like accuse me of victim blaming and stuff. Like, no, absolutely not. Like, I, I'm just trying to give you a reason, but not an excuse, right? Like once I realized why I, I was dating the same types of people over and over and over again, it was my job to step out of that cycle to ensure that it didn't happen again. So the last thing I kind of want to talk about is like, Again, get out of that situation. So there's so many parallels between just everything, like addiction and mental health as a whole. And that's why I keep trying to bring addiction and mental health together. So like, for example, drug addicts and alcoholics, when they get sober, they always ask me like, well, what if my, with the people I'm living with, they still drink or they still use or whatever. Like you need a supportive, environment. You need a supportive environment. Like when you get clean or sober, you don't need everybody to get clean and sober, but it, it is pretty important to have people who you're living with, like respect that about you. So like when it comes to Jenna or PTSD, like I would recommend if you're in that situation, you need to get out of that situation. Like it is not okay for people to neglect, you know, this trauma that you've been through and, you know, uh, do these things that trigger your PTSD. That is not okay. You, you need to remove yourself from the situation. But the problem, the problem that we see with a lot of people, they stay in these toxic environments for so, 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 so long that it becomes normal. It becomes normal. Like, this is why we gotta bring these things up. Like, I'm telling you, there's something called an informal in, uh, intervention. And one of the things, one of the things that's part of an informal intervention or even motivational interviewing, is just bringing up the idea, right? Like, and you would be amazed how often this worked. Like, I'm telling you, I can make a whole video about this. Like, just saying to somebody, have you thought about leaving that house? Like, you would be amazed because when we're in the middle of that storm, we don't even think that's an option, right? Like, there are drug addicts and alcoholics when you say, have you thought about going to treatment? And like, that's something that they literally never thought about. Like, it seems silly, but I swear to you, like I have been blown away through my years of working in mental health and addiction and all of this. Like how many times I just present an idea to somebody and it's something that they never even thought about. All right, so again, like please share this video. If you know somebody who's in this type of situation, like share this, share this just so other people know like this kind of stuff is not cool, it's not okay, all right? But anyways, I would love to know, you know, your thoughts down in the comments below. Again, I will be linking some videos down and some other channels, but like if you're somebody, you know, whether, whether you struggle with PTSD or anxiety or addiction, like, What's your experience with people like not respecting your mental illness and purposely triggering you, all right? And what, if, what have you had to do to get out of that situation? All right, let's talk in the comments below. Okay, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, 
please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And again, make sure you join our Facebook group. It's linked down in the description below, all right? And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to help support me, spread a message of hope, click or tap right there. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.